Hi eBay sellers, it's Suzanne. How'd you like that intro music? Kind of have a bridal theme going on there. It's so fun making these videos because you can include whatever you want. So welcome back to another eBay Supersize Sales $100 or more video. The sales in this video come from my Facebook group where sellers post what they found where they found it, how much they paid for it, and show us the actual sale so that we can all learn from each other's successes. And these sales come from late August, early September 2021. So now that the boring intro is over, <laughs> we can get busy on talking about the sales. So we're going to start with Inger who paid $20 at a thrift store for a brick phone. This is the vintage Motorola cellular brick phone. Sales associates were making fun of me for buying it. I kept my mouth shut. Antenna cracked almost off, so lowered price compared to solds. Sold for $99 in a day. So there you see a photo of it. Raise your hand if you had one of these brick phones. <laughs> I did not, but I remember other people using them and just thought that was the greatest thing in the world that you could make a phone call from anywhere as long as you had reception. So that's a pretty cool vintage item. $20 sold for 99. Next up is Mark Sherrill paid $2 at an estate sale, sold for $100 plus $6 shipping. This is a new sealed algebra and trigonometry, uh, looks like a textbook, no it's the Wiley Loose Leaf Print Edition. So it's an insert, but still $2 sold for $100. Next up is Anne Flood Rice. She says, I love obscure history books. Got this for $1 at an estate sale after all the books had been picked through. Took less than a month to sell. Next up is Anne Flood Rice. She says, I love obscure history books. Got this for $1 at an estate sale after all the books had been picked through. Took less than a month to sell. Priced it high at $189 and got a very kind offer of $100. Never expected to get full price. I just wanted it to look like it was worth it and the buyer thinks they got an awesome deal. So this is a I. Ryan County History Texas book 1978 Museum Historical Society with photos. A dollar and it sold for a hundred dollars and I love how she says after everything had been picked through because that is proof that the people before you don't know everything or they're not looking for what you're looking for and I think I'm gonna put this on a t-shirt it's not where you go it's what you know because you can find things to sell everywhere next up is Tiffany she says, I got a bunch of yarn at Goodwill back in May, $3 each, so $15 investment for a $100 sale. And it's Rowan Yarn, R-O-W-A-N. This is a lot of five, so her $15 turned into 100 And if you look at the photo, it's just a pile of yarn. It is new with the tag, so apparently this brand or the contents, whatever it's made of, 70% uh, mohair, 30% silk, has value. Okay, next up is Aaron Hare. Aaron, tell me how to pronounce your last name because that might not be right. <laughs> she says, off my bookshelf, sold for $100 plus shipping. Taping and carrying a 40 pound box was not fun. Yeah, I can relate to that, very heavy. Vintage, expositors, 
Bible commentary book lot set of 12. So free to her and sold for a hundred dollars. Now we have Sue Ross Broadhead. She says, I sold this Johnny Was dress tunic for a friend. She had bought it a while ago and never worn it. She was hoping to recoup her clearance sale price, which she did. She wanted a fast sale. Johnny Was trapeze tunic dress retails for $229. So $100 sale and she doesn't say if she split. Oh, all she wanted to do was recoup her clearance price. So not sure what the profit was on that, but still $100 sale. Okay, Wendy Kruger paid $3 at a thrift store, sold for $105 plus shipping in four months. Vintage Givenchy faux baroque pearl oval clip earrings. I challenge you to say that five times fast. <laughs> Beautiful clip faux pearl earrings. Three dollars sold for a hundred and five. We need to get Wendy on a podcast to talk about jewelry because um, she does very well with it and that's one of those items that kind of looks all the same unless you know what you're looking for. So Wendy, I'm going to reach out to you and see if you are up for that. You know, not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> Leslie Kidd hosted a rare auction for this vintage Ralph Lauren polo sport hat. There was nothing like it on eBay, so I started the listing at $35. So yeah, this is pretty boring, nondescript Ralph Lauren hat sold for $108.49 to a buyer in Australia. After global shipping program fees, they ended up paying roughly $150 overall. I paid $1.99 at my local Goodwill for it. It's funny because they price up Ralph Lauren stuff and this one just slipped through. It's that boring. <laughs> I know it's so hard to grasp that concept that something can be a very utilitarian mundane item and sell for so much money but an item is worth what someone will pay for it and in this case it was worth a hundred and eight dollars. <laughs> okay we have Leslie again she says, I'm always on the lookout for obscure British series DVDs. Paid $9.99 at my local Goodwill and took best offer of $110. Took about two weeks to sell. Ellery Queen Mysteries DVD six disc set, $110. And I remember that name. I think there was an Ellery Queen show on like in the 70s maybe. I think I remember my mom watching that, uh, The Mysteries. Okay, Emily Smith. Just sold my first Johnny Was. Comps were anywhere from 80 to 160, so I went somewhere in the middle at $114.99. Someone just bought it for full price after it was listed for about a month. I paid $9.99 my first time at a new to me Salvation Army planning to go back soon now. So there you can see Johnny was size extra small Zoe silk button front blouse and she paid 10 bucks for it. It sold for $114.99. Now we have Diana Duhon back with another baseball glove. She's been selling a lot of these lately on consignment so this was on consignment as well. No cost to her took best offer of $120 plus shipping after two months. Louisville Slugger Baseball Glove. Okay, next up we have um, Mr. Bones. <laughs> I love the way Sue Ann positioned him on the couch and staged this photo. So uh, Sue Ann Akers bought this at a garage sale for $3. I included a video of it working in my listing. It sold in two weeks. This is vintage, jemmy, hanging, talking, 
light up skeleton. And yes, there is a way to include video in your listing that does help sell any items that um, are electronic, have moving parts, play music, anything that a photo can't convey. So uh, I do have a lesson on that in my premium library and I can definitely help you learn to do that if you have items that lend themselves to video. Uh, I definitely recommend you go back through your listings and add video to any of those items because it does help them sell. It builds buyer confidence that the item works as it should, even if it's just like a curling iron turning on and you know the red light lighting up. Um, that definitely helps build buyer confidence, which is what you need to get a stranger to give you their money. Now we have Virginia Rose Honecker purchased this new as a gift from my husband who was a huge Tolkien fan years ago. Sold in a week for $125 plus shipping. This is a Lord of the Rings collector's edition and Genia asked if her husband knew he sold, she sold the book and Virginia answered that he passed away six years ago so it was time to let it go. So sentimental item as well as a valuable item but I have seen this particular book show up on Money Making Mondays several times selling for over a hundred dollars. So if you have one and you're willing to let it go that's what it's worth. Now we have Jody Clark paid $11.88 total at Goodwill for this pair of Sonos Play speakers. Listed for $150 and sold for best offer of $125 plus $25 shipping in about an hour. They both had cracks in the white plastic and one was dented but they both worked perfectly. In better condition they would have sold more in the $200 to $250 range. So take a look at that photo, Sonos speakers, be on the lookout for those. Sherry Lewis Guy, Pioneer Stereo from my car in 2005. Forgot how much I paid for it back then, but maybe 200. So here is a Pioneer car stereo that sold for $125. Okay, now we've got Bevan Dunn. She said, paid 20 cents or less for this as part of my first auction lot at the end of April. Sold for $129 in about three and a half months. This is a Toomey Signature Collection tote bag. So 20 cents sold for $129. And there's a bit of a story here she said, I actually bought the lot for myself to see what was in a bag of scarves. Turns out it was seven garbage bags of new with tag items and vintage hats, scarves, shoes, bags, bras, pantyhose, and more. I have not listed it all yet and getting close to $500 profit so far. This lot was what turned me from selling my own stuff to picking. Been crazy ever since but so more important that I could have ever known. She says she was diagnosed with stage four cancer one month ago and is recovering from major surgery. I had, close, I had to close my photography business, but eBay shop has been open the whole time and every sale feels like a little win when nothing else is. This group has helped me so much so far and I have already sold two bolos from Suzanne's book and have another listed. So I didn't actually read this until I was putting this video together yesterday and Bevan posted this on August 31st. So just as a uh, shout out for her uh, battling stage four cancer and recovering, I did want to give her store a shout out in case anyone wants to go and support her by purchasing something from her store. It's called Mimosa Road and you can see um, her user ID is on this page also. Um, so if you feel compelled to 
help out a fellow seller by maybe purchasing something from her. Um, there's her store and um, check that out. And we wish you all the best, Bevan. Okay, next up is Amy Bolton Hunsinger. Purchased these sheets at a yard sale for $5 just because they were new and figured for $5 they would be great in our eBay store. Anyway, when I looked them up, I was pleasantly surprised. This Biltmore brand seems to have a following. It looks like they come from Belk. Another cool thing is that an offer came through fairly quickly for $60 as I was trying to accept the offer they ended up selling for full asking price. <laughs> so these are Biltmore Egyptian 610 thread count cotton queen sheets. And the thread count, obviously the higher it is, the more expensive they are. So um, that's a pretty nice pair of sheets right there. So $5 sold for $132.97. And now we have a regular KC. $10 at the thrift store sold in $135 in about two months. Lego Architecture Imperial Hotel complete with manual. He's really good with the Lego. $10 sold for $135. Okay, Kimberly McCoy Furman. I picked this set of vintage Prismacolor colored pencils for $12 at an estate sale. I listed it for $145 and sold for best offer of $135 hours later. This is the second set of vintage color pencils sold in less than a month for over $100. This brand has become a bolo for me. And yes, I remember seeing this before. So take a look at the screen if you're not. And she paid $12 and sold for $135. Okay, here's a fun item. Shauna Turner picked up at a tag sale for a dollar and sold for $140 plus shipping. Buyer was happy with their purchase. This is a vintage Lisa Frank planner, smiley face, flowers, floral, agenda book with stickers. A dollar and sold for a hundred and forty. Okay, now we have Tamarin Smith McClure. Got this free from a friend. Sold it in two weeks even though it needs a new battery. This is a Zodiac Sea Dragon watch in pink. Needs a new battery. Free and sold for $142.50. Here's a fun item because I love that 70s show. <laughs> Lydia Valenti found at a library book sale on $5 bag day, so it cost me 27 cents if I count per item or $1.83 if I count per listing sold for $149.99 in two days. I took my kids with me the first time I went to the sale, rookie move, so I was praying it would still be there when I went back the next day and there it was. So $1.83 worst case scenario and sold for 150 bucks. Okay, Jenny Baum paid $5 at a thrift store for this pair of shoes with Protolus insoles included. Earlier this summer I sold the insoles for $39.93. So this is a pair of Wolf Shepherd Ringer Loafers calfskin leather shoes. $5 sold that for $150 and then the insoles sold separately for $40. Okay, this is an item that is just like really just leaves you scratching your head, especially if you had these. Savannah Boone. I paid $1 for these at a yard sale. It sold on best offer for $155 in three months. Vintage Tom Fields Tinkerbell Nail Polish and Lipstick. I mean, just little cosmetics for little girls. A dollar and she sold them for a hundred and fifty five dollars. 
<laughs> and I know my little sister had these. I recognize this packaging. So just all the things that we are kicking ourselves for not saving, um, we just have to get out there and find these um, in the wild, as I say, at garage sales, thrift stores, um, that are being donated because um, there's just so many things I had that are valuable now but who would have ever thought to keep them okay here is our cover photo for this video Kathleen Metter Gifford here's the story my friend was ready to donate her preserved 1966 wedding dress and veil I offered to try and sell it for her I listed the gown and veil separately as an auction for two weeks but it did not sell I did receive a message from a potential buyer advising me that these should not be separated and proceeded to give me a few reasons why. She did say to keep her in mind if I put the gown and veil together. She obviously knew much more than I and I took her advice. I got in touch with her and she was very grateful that I did not take her letter personally. I could tell she had a real passion for this niche. I relisted them together and sent her a link to the listing. Within two hours, she purchased both at full listing price of $179.99. As it turned out, she's developing an online bridal museum and has quite a collection of vintage and antique wedding gowns. I am thrilled I saved this gown from a donation center and possibly a landfill. So the little nugget of knowledge in this listing is that you never know why people want these vintage items. Some have very specific reasons, not just because they want to look at it. It's, you know, a lot going on behind the scenes that you don't know. So this item sold for $179.99 and I love how they included the photo of the bride wearing the dress. It really, you know, shows its vintage quality. It shows what it looks like, you know, being modeled on someone because it is kind of hard to tell on some of these um, full sweep dresses and negligees and that kind of thing it's hard to tell what it looks like without it being modeled so I really loved this listing and the whole story behind it next up is Amy Crane Decker purchased 33 of these at a yard sale for $20 there were three different years 2003 2004 and 2005 a buyer messaged me and asked if I would combine two of the years for them so I did a private auction was thrilled when he paid full asking price of hundred ninety nine dollars plus shipping still have eleven to sell but I could not be happier with the profit so far so this is 22 issues of Shonen Jump magazines I have never heard of these but we'll now look for them <laughs> so 20 bucks and sold for 199 and still has some left okay Yvonne Smith found an item in the bolo book paid 79 cents at an estate yard sale sold in three days for full asking price of hundred and ninety nine dollars priced mine higher than comps because the blue appears to be a less common color baby Morgan mini blanket new in package so yes this is in the bolo book along with 130 other items <laughs> that you can be on the lookout for and Yvonne is living proof that these items are out there and you can find them Next up is Helen Newton, a quilt from my childhood which I listed on July 17th and it sold yesterday, August 30th, for full asking price of $200 plus shipping. So this is a vintage handmade 1950s 
quilt pinwheel design. Now we've got Amy Bolton Hunsinger back again. Quilts seem to be something that I find often. This one was especially gorgeous. Came from a large estate sale haul where I spent $75 for a car full of items. I would say this was $5 out of it. I had it listed for $275, took a best offer of $200. Took about a month to sell. And you can see that is a gorgeous handmade quilt. Scalloped edges and she's got the word flower sack which is what quilts were made of back in the day when they didn't have any fabric they just used flower sacks okay we've got Emily Ng my best flip so far I found this game at a neighborhood garage sale on an unattended driveway where everything was free and I picked it up around noon. They had started to open this game but apparently gave up so everything was still new or unplayed inside. Held off on best offers and sold it for full asking price $225. And the name of the game is Stardew Valley. Cameron Hilty. Hello everyone, I'm new here but excited to start contributing in the future. Well welcome Cameron and you are an example of someone who is new and posting their first sale. So welcome to the club. She says I bought this game at my local Goodwill for two dollars and listed it for 250 plus shipping and sold it for best offer in less than eight hours. The case is like a suitcase and the strap was broken off and I'm really surprised how well it did even though I've done well with other foreign games like Backgammon. I wouldn't say Backgammon is foreign but I get where you're coming from on that. This is a vintage Mahjong set Lucite mid-century modern 60s so it may not have mattered obviously didn't matter that the strap was broken. Um, they may have wanted it just for its vintage quality. It's mid-century modern and uh, the material that the tiles are made of. Okay, Amy Hunsinger just keeps posting. <laughs> the hits just keep on coming. She says, this came from a yard sale. My husband likes this kind of stuff and doesn't mind packing it at all. The stereo came from a yard sale. We paid $20 for it. It took just three, under three months to sell. And this is a tested Denon DRR uh, receiver with cassette tape, $275, $20 investment. Okay, we've got Nancy Nestler Schultz. I lost the Shinola watch that I love while on vacation. So I bought this one on eBay as a close replacement. I got the seller down to $200. Days later, of course, I found my favorite watch. It was in the bottom of my travel makeup case. I contacted the seller within days to request a return. He said no returns allowed. So I decided to try and sell this myself on eBay and get my investment back. I put it on auction and started at $225 thinking I'd at least break even if it sold. The auction went to $325 and I profited $125. So that is an amazing story. You can always resell stuff if you don't need it or don't want it anymore and that includes things you buy on eBay and look at this listing got 504 views so quite a popular item okay now we've got Brian Rappaport sold another die cast model this morning for $325 best offer I paid $35 for this one at an estate sale about a month ago the buyer lives about 30 minutes from me and I will meet up with him tomorrow morning when I'm out hitting more estate and garage sales. Saves him the shipping cost and me worrying of handling of handing this one off to FedEx or UPS. Loving these higher end die cast models I've found lately. 
So this sold for $325. Exoto 1965 Cobra Daytona Coupe number 26. And he paid $35 for it. So sold it for almost 10 times his investment. Okay, here is a fun and familiar item for me. Paula Brennan Waters. I purchased this new in the box Shalimar dusting powder for $3 at an estate sale. I was shocked to see comps when I got home. Sure enough, it sold in two weeks for full price even though I had offer turned on. This is vintage Shalimar dusting powder. Sold for $345. She paid $3. And I commented on her post and said, if I had a dollar for every time I heard my mother say Shalimar, I would be a millionaire. She loved that stuff in the 80s. And she had the perfume and the powder and you know all the different things that came with it. And that's what uh, we would try to give her for Christmas because uh, she was allergic to a lot of things um, and different scents would bother her but this one didn't so um, that was you know our go-to thing for a gift for our mom okay KC has a espresso machine $25 at the thrift store sold for 350 in about three weeks I always look for all-in-one espresso machines which are easily identified by having built-in grinders they often have an error code which relates to cleaning. They're generally pretty easy to clear up. So you can see there it is a Seiko, S-A-E-C-O, fully automatic espresso coffee machine sold for right at $350. Okay, Brian has another item. Bought 10 Franklin Mint models, Harleys, and a few cars Thursday morning at an estate sale for $600 total. Sold this one in about 90 minutes after asking $349.99 plus shipping. So you can see there it's a Franklin Mint Harley motorcycle. And Sean Sweeney commented, I got a Franklin Mint Unicorn Desk Weight that I thought, I'm not sure what he's saying there, um, got it for free and sold it for $30, so I'm definitely looking for these. Sue Ann Acres has a cool item, very cool item. I bought this at Goodwill for $25 months ago. I have delayed listing it because I dread shipping it. My husband promised to help me pack it, so I listed it along with a video of it working. It sold within 18 hours for full price of $399.99 plus 100 bucks shipping. Rare rotating lava lamp, mid-century modern. So here we have another example of using video to help sell your item. Um, so just a reminder to get on that. Okay, we have Casey again, free from my son's toy collection, sold for $409.95 in 12 hours. He actually received two of these for Christmas once. I sold the duplicate the following Christmas and felt like a hero getting slightly more than its retail price. New sealed ones now go for $1,000. You just never know what's going to be the next great collectible. So this is a 2014 Hasbro Transformers sold for $409.95. Okay, and our last item is a fun Halloween item. I keep using that word fun, but you know what? These items are fun. <laughs> I mean, what other job can you have so much fun? Lindsay McKnight Flint. New to estate sales, found this Department 56 Spider House. I paid way up for it at $86. Sold the next day for $650. Woke up to an overnight offer that I gladly accepted. Biggest sale for me. Also put it in the Money Making Monday thread. So here you can see Department 56 Rare, The Spider House, Snow Village, Halloween, Trick or Treat Lane. So there's a photo of it, so you can be on the lookout for that when you are out there treasure hunting. 
She paid $86. It sold in a day for $650. Now, is everybody excited about getting those items listed? Um, I know you're excited about getting out there and shopping for items, but that's what these videos are for, is to remind you that anything can sell at any time. Get those items listed. We're heading into fourth quarter, so you want to have as much for sale as humanly possible to take advantage of that. Remember that we are still in the days of COVID. Production is down everywhere. Uh, shipping is being affected with the uh, shipping container companies. Um, there's a lot going on with getting product here to the United States to sell. So if it's already here, if you already have it in your house or nearby at a thrift store, you have a great chance of selling it because um, those imports just aren't happening like they normally should. Okay, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Would love your comments as always. Thanks to everyone who posts on the Money Making Mondays because we are all learning from you. I'm tired of talking. I'm tripping over my tongue. So we're going to end this video now and I will see you next time. Have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.